Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Reagan and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining my channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to invite you to subscribe to the channel because that's really going to help me in improving this community. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm actually going to walk you through a little bit of trigonometry. We're going to be looking at how we can use cosine and sine from the math class and how we can apply it into games. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing in this video, which is to do a couple of simulations by using sine and cosine. I, I first want to basically create a sphere. Then we're going to be moving that sphere in a, in a circular manner on, on the x-axis and z-axis, and then we're going to do x and y. I also want to create a canvas where we can display the, the results and we can see what's happening as far as numbers are concerned so before we get going i want to i want to show you a couple of things that that i think are going to be really helpful when whenever you're trying to find out how cosine and sine works so this is a site that i use to basically to get a, a refreshment of cosine sine and tangent so the the cool thing about this is you can drag your mouse around and it'll basically give you the results of the degrees. So let's say that we wanted to calculate what sine was. So in this case, I have sine of 32, and it gives me 0.53. I also have cosine of 32, which gives me 0.84a. And then I also get the tangent of 32, which is 0.625. So in terms of what we're going to be doing in this exercise, we're going to need to calculate the x value and the y value. So if we're looking at sine, we're looking for the value of y, which in this case is going to be 0 0.53, because we need to know this specific point right here when we're going to be animating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a sphere right here, and we're going to be calculating the value of y across. Not only the value of y, but you can see as I'm moving my mouse, I'm also changing the value of, of x. So in this case, x is 0 0.27 and y is 0 0.961. So what cosine and sine do is they give me the results of x and y. And one of the things that I that I always, you know, that I always wonder is why would I use cosine and sine in games? And, and it turns out that you use them a lot. You use them to, to do a lot of circular cir circular animations or movements. Or, you know, if you, let's say that you wanted to move your camera in a circular manner, or you wanted to draw a circle. So anything that has to do with circles, you're going to be using that a lot. And I'm sure there's a lot of different applications where you can use sine and cosine. So in this case, we're just going to use it for simple things such as moving a sphere, moving a 3D model, and then also the camera around. So the other thing that I want to, that I want to mention is as we're using, as we're doing the calculation, we're going to be using pi. And the value of pi, it's going to be 3.14 and basically a lot more numeric values. So right now I'm calculating, you know, what 360 degrees is, which is a full circle. And if we convert that to radians, that's going to give us basically pi, pi times 2, which is going to be 6.28319. So just keep that in mind because if you, I'm going to pull up a terminal here. Because I, I think it's really helpful if you're using, I use Python a lot, and I know this video is not for Python, but this is basically what, what you're going to have in many programming languages. So if I, let's say that I wanted to import the math library and I wanted to do sine, and if I do sine of a value, let's say that I wanted to do sine of, let's say we do 360, that's going to be the, the sine value. This is going to be the y value of 0 0.95. And if I do the, if I do cosine, and let me type in cosine, it's going to be negative 0 0.283 and, and then so on. The other thing that I want to show you if we use math of pi, which in this case, yeah, which is case lowercase. So my math, math of pi gives you 3.14, which is basically 180. So if I do 180, it's going to be pi which is going to be that value. So that's going to be half of a circle. So if we want to do pi times 2, that's going to be 6.28, which is going to be a full circle. So just always remember those numbers. Pi is very important. And when you multiply pi times 2, that's also very important because it's going to tell us that we're going to go a full circle. 
So let's go ahead and go into Unity and do a couple more things so this, this starts to make more sense. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a 3D object and this one is gonna be a sphere. And we're gonna keep it very simple. We're gonna create a new script and I already have a scripts folder. And also keep in mind that I'm gonna be sharing this example through GitHub so you can download it. So let's go ahead and create a new C-sharp script. And this one we're just gonna call it trigonometry. Excellent. And then what I'm gonna do is in the sphere, I'm gonna just associate the trigonometry script with my sphere. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and double click it to open our code. And excellent. Let me just put my VS code down here. And there's a couple of things that I'm gonna be that I'm gonna be using in here. So the first thing that I'm gonna add is I'm gonna add a, a new variable, and this one's gonna be flow. And this is gonna be the frequency. This is gonna be to determine how fast I want the sphere to move in a circular manner. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna set it to one, and I'm gonna make it serializable so that we can change it through the inspector. Excellent, so remember why when I said about, I was talking about pi, right? And pi was about 3.14, and if we go back here, let's go ahead and go into Python, and I can pull, I can pull, pull this number, and that's gonna be, that's what pi is gonna be. So. And that's gonna be basically half of a circle. So there's gonna be half of a circle. I, I basically learned by a lot of visualizations. So uh, stay with me because this is gonna really, it's gonna start making a lot more sense. Now if I go back into Python and I multiply pi times two, we're gonna get, we're gonna get this value, right? And that's gonna be a full circle. So we can say half of a circle and a full, a full circle, right? So now what we need to do is we need to calculate, if I want to animate the sphere and I wanna go in a circle manner, we need to calculate the position. And, and to calculate positions or to set a position in, in Unity, you need to access the transform. So we know that we have a transform because this is inheriting from mono behavior and we know that we have a position. So now what we need to do is we need to calculate the new vector. So I wanna calculate the new position of this sphere over time. And that word over time is very important. It's very important because I want to, you know, as time is passing, I want to calculate the X value and the new, basically the new Z value, which in this case is gonna be used by the cosine. So the, this is how it's gonna look like. We're gonna calculate the X value and remember that I want to do I want to do a full circle, so we're gonna use sine, and we're gonna use we're gonna multiply it by two, so we're gonna say math that pi. So we're multiplying that by two, so we can get a, a full circle. Then I'm gonna multiply that by time because I want to change this value over time, and then I'm also gonna multiply by the frequency. The, the other thing that I'm gonna do, I could animate this on X and Y, but I'm gonna do it on Z. So Y, I want Y to stay at zero. And the other thing that I need to calculate is the Z value, which in this case is gonna be calculated by cosine. And let's go ahead and do cosine. And I'm also gonna multiply because I want this to be able to do a full circle. I'm gonna say math up high times time times the frequency. And we need to go ahead and close the vector three. Awesome. So what are we doing right here? And like I said, we're calculating the value of X, which in this case, we're going to, we're going to get a sign, we're gonna get a full circle, multiply by the time, and then we're gonna multiply that by the frequency because we want to control how fast this is going. And the time is gonna allow us to basically animate it on the on the x-axis. The other axis that we're gonna be calculating is, in this case, is gonna be z, but we're calculating the cosine. So to do that, we're gonna do exactly the same thing, and actually it's gonna be all, all the same thing, it's just gonna be over a different axis. But we're gonna use the value of cosine. So let's go ahead and look in Unity what, what this is actually doing for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And if we play, we can see that we're animating. And remember that I said that we were going to not animate on Y and it was gonna stay at zero? It's because I'm calculating, I'm basically calculating X and leaving y, y at zero. And then I'm using the value of, 
of y to change the position of z. So, which is, when I say y, I'm talking about cosine. So, the other thing that I can do also is I can change the frequency. If I wanted to, you know, make this a lot slower, I could change the frequency and do that. The other thing that I can do here is say that I only wanted to, I wanted to animate, you know, for real x and y in no z. I could change this to zero and then change this to be on the y axis. So now we should see a different result. So if I hit play, we're going to see something different. So now what is happening is basically calculating x and actually calculating y. So we were using the value of y for z, but in this case, we're actually getting sine to calculate x and cosine to calculate y. And this is changing because we're basically using time that time and then multiplying that by the frequency. So again, you can basically slow it down by changing the value of the frequency. So now if we wanted to, let's say that we wanted to change the wavelength, meaning that we wanted to change how big and how wide this was going to be. So we can add another, another variable here. And we can say, we can call this one, we can say wavelength if we wanted to. And let's say that this was going to be, so by default it's going to be 1, so it shouldn't, shouldn't really change. And we're also going to make it serializable so we can change it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply the x value by that and also the total of the cosine by the wavelength. Let's go ahead and go back into Unity and let's hit, let's wait until it compiles so we can see the new the new variable. And everything should look the same, but if I start changing the wavelength, you can see that now the circle is getting much bigger. And that's because I'm multiplying the entire results of the x value times the wavelength parameter that I'm passing in. So I could do, I can go very big, I can also go very narrow, which makes it really, really useful for, you know, for doing animations that are more animations that are done programmatically. You can see that that is really cool, it's changing. I can also duplicate this, and let's say that I wanted to do another one in the middle. So we can do something like that. And you can see that we are basically creating animations that are done programmatically. So I can do another one. We can make this one smaller. And let's do something like that. How about making another one? And we make this one much smaller. So now we're starting to get some really cool effects. You can see that actually that one it's very, very big. Like let me go. There we go. And let's make it faster. So you can see that I'm getting there is really dynamic when it comes to you know changes just a few parameters. You could also make this you know much smaller as far as the size. So I can go 0.5. And let's make it a little slower so we can see where it, where it is. There we go. And if I go to the same view, you can see that it's just looking really cool. It's, everything is animating. I can also, you know, move them, offset them. And if we wanted to, let me go ahead and undo that. So yeah, we can we can base we can do a lot of things with this and add more parameters. The the other thing that I wanted to do is add a canvas so that we can see what's happening with some of the values and and we can do that we can add a new let's go ahead and add a new canvas so i'm going to go to ui and click on canvas and i'm going to keep this very simple because i want you to i want this to be more of learning about trigonometry than than ui so all right so now in this one i'm just going to add a new value and we can just add a text box and we can just make it, let's make it big. Doesn't really matter for this example. It's more of a debugging debugging tool. All right, and I'm gonna make the text bigger. We can make it, if we wanted to, we can just make it total black. And this could be the value of, because the value of X, it's gonna be there. And then the value of Y, it's going to be there. There we go. And I think that that works. And we can just snap this to the top left. 
There we go, something like that I think I think will work. Then what I'll do is let's go ahead and let's go ahead and add a, add a variable here so that we can tie it to the UI. This is gonna be a text. So I'm gonna hover over it so that we can see we can bring or we can just do simply do this unity the UI text and then this is gonna be text results. Excellent. And we're also gonna make it serializable so that we can see we can tie it together. And then what I'll do here is we can get a couple of things. I'm gonna say uh, text equal, and we don't need to add what we what I put in, in there as a placeholder. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the position. So this one's gonna be vector three, and this is gonna be the result. And we can just, the, the dollar symbol is gonna go at the beginning because we're using a string interpolation. Excellent, and I'm just gonna do a new line and excellent and let's go ahead and plus symbol here and do another one here this one is going to be let's go ahead and get the value of so we could store what i'm going to do here is let's put this into a variable so that i can store it so i'm going to say flow x it's going to be that and then flow y going to be cosine and everything here should be the same so it's going to be x and y it's going to be a lot easier to read too so we can do something like that and then and then i can say x equal and then x and then y equal y another thing that we could add in here and we can also add the what the value of pi is so we can say pi equal and then this one is gonna be math of f. So that's gonna be pi. And lastly, we can get the value of pi multiplied by two. So we can also multiply that. And I think this should give us enough to see, to see what's happening. Let's go back into Unity. And, and in fact, we can just remove this. We can just say results go here and we can just center this and vertical align it excellent and we can probably make it smaller because there's going to be a lot of text let's make it 30. all right so i think that should work and we can see that we're seeing the results right there all right so now let's go ahead and hit play and it's going to error out because we haven't tied it together and yep we did get an exception so let's go ahead and go into our sphere and associate our text with our trigonometry script text it Play and let's see the results now. So now we can see that the vector three, you know, vector three value is changing, and we are we are calculating x and y. So that's what we're seeing, x and y changing, and also we can see the the flow value of x and y. And the other thing that was really really important was just to get the value of pi and then multiplying pi by two in radians, which gives us 6.20a and so on. So that's basically what I wanted to show you today, guys. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net. They have amazing tutorials for game developers. Also, check me out in Patreon where I'm posting information about what's happening behind the scenes with my channel, what's happening with my games, and everything that I'm doing, and also early access to source code. So thank you very much, guys.